the Women's March believed to be on track to exceed a million participants on Saturday, as organizers said the huge rally in the capital and U.S. marches from coast to coast had been peaceful despite huge numbers and palpable anger at the agenda of President Trump. Evie Harmon, global coordinator of the marches, said initial and unofficial estimates put the crowd in Washington at more than one million people and the attendance at events worldwide in excess of three million. I'm hoping it will be a record in Washington, she told The Guardian. Especially with the turnout at the inauguration on Friday being, well, not so high. Harmon based her calculation on reports from March stewards and volunteers who were out on the streets of the Capitol and had experienced the first inauguration of Barack Obama as president in 2009, when as many as 1.8 million people were estimated to have come to Washington. If the crowd for the Women's March did exceed a million, it would almost certainly be the largest protest recorded in U.S. history, topping the enormous demonstrations of the civil rights era and against the Vietnam War which frequently attracted a quarter to half a million people. Perhaps surprisingly, given the sheer numbers packed into the streets in many cities and the rage and defiance bubbling beneath the sea of pink hats, there was no reported trouble. I have not heard of any arrests, said Harmon. The Washington Monument shrouded in clouds as people packed the National Mall for the Women's March. The Washington Monument shrouded in clouds as people packed the National Mall for the Women's March. Photograph, Jonathan Ernst slash Reuters. This contrasted with Trump's inauguration day on Friday, when protesters in black masks smashed windows, set fires, and threw rocks at police wearing riot gear. There were more than 230 arrests on Friday and District of Columbia prosecutors said on Saturday many were due in court and could face felony rioting charges. Those dark scenes provided a frightening backdrop as Donald Trump gave a grim inaugural speech. But on Saturday an ocean of women in pink hats cheered and chanted with a mix of exuberance and defiance. The crowds were of remarkable size in many cities, especially in Chicago, Los Angeles and New York and with significant rallies in Boston and Atlanta as well as Seattle, Nashville, Houston, Denver and many others. By midday the crowd in Washington had grown to an estimated 500,000 and as a rally at the base of Capitol Hill continued. Streets radiating out from the buildings at the heart of America's democracy began to fill with people. Roads and mass transit were packed and there was uncertainty at one stage about whether the planned march to the Ellipse, in front of the White House, could actually take place. In the event the crowds continued in what amounted to a triumphant shuffle to within earshot of the Trump White House. Women crowd the metro in Washington, D.C. on their way to the march. Women crowd the metro in Washington, D.C. on their way to the march. Photograph, Adriz Latif slash Reuters. Speakers warned of a heart-wrenching time to be a woman. The Latina activist and actress America Ferreira called on the crowds to reject a credo of hate. Less than 24 hours before, near the same spot, Trump had delivered a brutal, sinister speech meant to whip up ordinary people against Washington. The president railed against a dystopian scene of American carnage, in which crime, poverty, post-industrial decline, drug addiction, and economic inequality scarred the landscape. On Saturday, Ferrara said, It's been a heart-wrenching time to be a woman and an immigrant in this country A platform of hate and division assumed power yesterday. But the president is not America. We are America. She was followed by the feminist activist Gloria Steinem, who said of Trump, he said he was for the people. I have met the people and you are not them. She added, this is the upside of the downside. This is an outpouring of an outpouring of energy and true democracy that I have never seen in my very long life. It is wide in age, it is deep in diversity and remember the constitution does not begin with I the president it begins with we the people. Gloria Steinem greets protesters before speaking at the Women's March on Washington. Gloria Steinem greets protesters before speaking at the Women's March on Washington. Photograph, John Minkillo slash AP. Referring to campaign rhetoric that could become foreign policy under the Trump administration, she told the crowd, if you force Muslims to register, we will all register as Muslims. Banners were endowed with hearts, rainbows, unicorns, women's symbols, anti-nuclear missile symbols, 
but there were also signs calling for Trump to be impeached and, in reference to intelligence agencies' belief that Russia sought to influence the election, calling him Putin's puppet. Hillary Clinton tweeted, Thanks for standing, speaking and marching for our values at Women's March. Important as ever. I truly believe we're always stronger together. When we elect a possible president, we too often go home. We've elected an impossible president, we're never going home. The Georgia Congressman John Lewis spoke at a rally in March in Atlanta, a week after he announced he would boycott Trump's inauguration. Trump then accused the civil rights veteran of leading a crime-ridden district and being a politician who was all talk, talk, talk. The number of Democrats boycotting the inauguration then rose above 60. You look fine and you're ready to agitate. You have a moral mission, Lewis told the Women's March in Atlanta. Back in Washington, four women who have accused Trump of inappropriate sexual contact attended the march. I am here to seek justice and am pleased with the opportunity to stand shoulder to shoulder with those who march for women's rights today, said Summer Zervis, a former contestant on The Apprentice who has accused Trump of groping her and making aggressive, unwanted sexual advances. She added that her presence was meant to inspire others to stand up to bullies. Women hold signs along the barricades at the Women's March on Washington, during Trump's first full day as president. Women hold signs along the barricades at the Women's March on Washington, during Trump's first full day as president. Photograph, John Minkillo slash AP. Zervis claims Trump's behavior occurred in 2007, when she met him at his hotel before the two had dinner. Temple Taggart McDowell, who was Miss Utah 1997 in Trump's Miss USA pageant and accuses Trump of unwanted kissing and touching, also attended, as did Jessica Drake an adult film star who claims Trump kissed and grabbed her without permission and propositioned her for $10,000 at a charity golf tournament. Trump has repeatedly denied their accusations. On Tuesday, Zervis sued Trump for defamation, in response to his denial that their private meeting took place. Hospital Dr. Chioma Ndubizi, meanwhile, had traveled from New York with colleagues who work in family planning. She held a sign saying Pussy Power and said in the months since the election women had been approaching her, worried about their birth control coverage. I saw a sign that said, too many issues for one sign. That's exactly how I feel. This is a moment to inspire others to act, she said.